Welcome back to the latest episode of the Five Star Talk podcast with JB and Millie. Hi guys! Now we have a very special guest on the show today and that is Consul Kato. Hello! So um, we've been really looking forward to having you on the show more or less for quite a while now but more so in the wake of this whole design core craze that's been going on at the moment and we've been loving doing that it's just been amazing so if you'd like to talk us through where the inspiration for that came and just how you kind of think it all went oh yeah thank you so much for having me i'm so excited um yeah so i would say maybe a month and a half ago two months something like that i found charlotte's channel and i reached out to her on instagram and I was just like, hey, I really like your channel. Do you want to do a collab with me? And then we kind of just talked a little bit. And we decided to do an interior design collab. And we really enjoyed doing that. And then after um, Charlotte was on Breaking Bells, then me and her and Holly started talking. And it all just kind of spiraled from there. You know, we really... We're all big into design, and I think we all have very different styles, so I think it just works out that, uh, you know, coming up with the same uh, theme, I guess, we can design it in very different ways. So I think it's really cool to see how everyone designs a certain room, even if you have the same theme. And then we wanted to make sure that we, you know, let the community get involved and have them take... Uh, them do their take on it and we actually we picked three of our favorites and i think we're announcing the winner tomorrow um so we're excited about that i think we had the um the viewers or you know the people in holly's discord voted and so that'll be announced tomorrow so it's really exciting Wow, that is amazing, and honestly, it's such a great show that I would consider you guys to be almost pioneers in a certain field in that I feel that, in terms of Harv's Island, we of course had the wedding season, and that was fine for what it was, but I do feel that this show has kind of made interior design and Harv's Island cool again, like, we have started our new show, Millie Makes, which is more about the interior design things, it also covers terraforming as well, but once we posted ours, kind of based on that whole kick of um, arcade vibe that Design Call was doing, we had so many people on Twitter saying, oh my gosh, this is such a great thing, here's our take on it, and it's just really taken off, and I think it's great to see the interior design side get a bit more coverage. Right, yeah, I feel like everything so far has been outside, which of course I love. You know, that's what I mainly do is decorating outside, but... Um... It's definitely nice to be able to use some of the different furniture, and that's another thing I like is that these different themes kind of force you to go out of your comfort zone, use things that you wouldn't normally use, and then, like you were saying, Harv's Island. I don't even remember. I think I went there maybe twice because I really didn't participate in the wedding event much. I just didn't... It didn't appeal to me all that much, so... Um, I think I've been like twice and so it's nice to just have a reason to go there and it's much easier to decorate on Harv's Island. You know, the first time we did, um, before we even called it Design Core, we had, uh, one challenge that we did, a beach basement and we all even forgot that Harv's Island existed and we did it in our actual houses because <laughs> I just feel like you just don't even think about it because you never go there. But it's definitely easier to use Harv's Island because you can use as many of one item as you want. You don't have to worry about customizing stuff. You can choose whatever. So that's really cool. Yeah, like, I do think that it is for the first time that I've seen Harv's Island in a good light is through Design Core. Like, I was very disappointed on the game when we first went there. Where I was like, oh, great, you know, it says we're going to a different island. I bet we can explore this island. You know, there's going to be some, like, really cute concepts working around the island. Let's go and explore. And then when we were just restricted within a fence, I was like, oh, okay, this isn't what I wanted at all. So, right. I feel like they didn't even... I feel like there wasn't even a good explanation on how to use Harv's Island or what you're even supposed to be doing there or 
anything. I feel like if they maybe added kind of like the wedding event where you would design something and you would get a reward from it, I feel Mm -hmm. like people would go there more often like, hey, you know, we want you to design this and then based on how you do, here's this reward. Maybe people would use it. But right now it's just kind of... Yeah. And they added... They added that weird feature where it was like, you know, you can bring as much back from here as you want, we'll just move it to your inventory. But you physically right. weren't bringing anything back from there because even during the wedding day season, they posted it out to you. And all right. the items that you use there just appear like through just whatever you've catalogued. It's like, what, what, what was that even for? What use is that supposed to have? Right. It's almost like they made a mistake and they meant to <laughs> to use that for the normal islands that we go to yeah. and not harvest that, you know, like that would be much more beneficial if I could go um, to a random island and gather materials or whatever and then send it back and then I could spend time uh, fishing or hunting bugs or whatever it was that I wanted to do, that would be beneficial, yeah. but on Harv's Island, yeah, there's no use for that. I guess the only other explanation could be if there's, like, an update coming that incorporates it a bit more. Like you said, perhaps some more, like, design challenges within the game. Yeah, I think... Only if they reward you and they don't send it in the mail, because Mm. it would have to be a reward on the island, right? Because, I mean, how often are you... Or even... I'm not using anything from my inventory when I'm there. Or even if they were to unlock the rest of the island, like I said, when... I first heard that we were going to fly over to someone else's island. I was like, oh my gosh, this is incredible because we'd only just got the game. We didn't have friends on Animal Crossing. So it was our first time going anywhere else. So it was like, oh my goodness, like, I want to see more of this island. So maybe they could unlock the rest and then you could go there to get resources and stuff. But I don't know. I mean, yeah, I think that'd be really cool. one of the main reasons why I go over there is because we are trying to collect all the um, amiibo cards at the moment, and obviously you can invite your villagers there and you can get a nice little portrait of them. But in terms of special characters like KK Slider, DJ KK, Gulliver, you can scan them in, and whilst you can't get some of the unavailable ones on Photopia, you can still get a nice poster, and. I'm not sure if they could do more of that, just to make more unlockables via that amiibo thing, but I don't know, I only just found out you could get the posters just because I tried the wedding event and we invited people, but I think that being one of the coolest features of Harv's Island wasn't even like mentioned until after the fact, so it's just kind of, I just feel like they didn't even market Harv's Island properly. Right. Yeah, I think I like all the posters. I remember I saw someone with them, and I didn't even know how you got them for a while. And um, I just wish they had, like you said, marketed it different. And I also wish they would have re-released Amiibo cards with this game, because finding them now is next to impossible unless you want to spend an astronomical amount for them. I think they could have sold a ton of them. Maybe they intended on doing it, and then the pandemic kind of hindered that a little bit. I don't know, but uh, I think it would have been really cool if they had done that. I mean, you are right. Like, we've tried to start collecting the Amiibo cards, but the earlier series, like, some people sell them for, like, in our currency, like, £35, so I guess that's about $42 for one card. And it's like, oh my goodness. Who can do this sort of thing? No. <laughs> right. Because there's, there's like 300 something of them, so. Yeah, there's so maybe many. 400 something? Yeah. I think there's about 400. I think there's about 100 and something per series, and there's four series and some special ones. Like, I think there's some Hello Kitty edition ones. But it's like, I don't know. It's just such a growing market. Like, I found some series free packs. Um, Over here in the UK and I think the rest of Europe, they only have three in a pack, two um, villagers and one special. And we found series three cards for like three pounds, but eventually that turned to eight pounds. And within a few weeks, that's now sitting at 19 pounds. So it's just going up so much. And besides the pandemic, I I can't understand why they haven't re-released them, but perhaps they will in the future. We can only hope. Right. There's only three cards in a pack? Yeah, in the US it's six, isn't it? 
I think it, yeah, six or seven. Three cards, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, it's almost as if that they should have intended a new series, in fact, to come out of New Horizons. Because I think there are so many, well not so many, but there are quite a few new Islanders, such as Raymond, I believe. And also NPCs, like it'd be great to be able to get a Gulliver card. Or I think Flick and CJ are also new for this game as well, so it'd be good to kind of collect them. But, I don't know, it's kind of difficult to gauge what Nintendo would have done without this year going how it did. And I would just love, love to have seen the real plans for it, especially with, like, the Mario anniversary. You could tell that this was going to be an amazing year with them featured in the Olympics and everything. But, I don't know, it's difficult to say what it could have been. Right, I agree. I almost wish they... I just wonder if they cancelled whatever they were going to do or if they've just just postponed it and if they just postponed it I wish they would just talk about it because honestly the knowing nothing is much worse to me than knowing and having to wait for it because I mean for the before the Mario direct it was like we knew nothing about anything coming out and that was the first you know exciting direct that we've had in a long time for me, anyway. I know they've had, you know, partner showcases and stuff like that, but none of those have appealed to me. Mm -hmm. I just, I would rather know about something and know that they're working on it than yeah. know nothing. See the and be like, okay, are you guys not going to have anything for us or what? <laughs> yeah, see, they are been very vague. Like, they've said they've got two years of updates planned, but it's kind of like nobody knows what are they going to look like. Right. Yeah, I'm going to be very upset if we don't get farming. Yeah, I know that's quite <laughs> a common kind of thing that people are wanting now. Uh, that'll be Not brilliant. even so much for the, the actual farming. I just want it for aesthetics, just because I want, like, pumpkins and vegetables and stuff. What? I think that would be so cute. It definitely would be. What do you think that would progress to, like, in terms of farming? So, say you could grow things, do you think... It would unlock like a cooking element. Do you think it'd just be an aesthetic element that you, there's a way of selling them and making a profit, kind of like with the turnips? Yeah, I honestly think they would have to turn it into cooking, just because I feel like if it was similar to fruit, where all you do is sell them or eat them to dig up trees, I don't feel like people would care that much. But if you can grow things, cook them, give it to villagers to, you know, get certain gifts or get certain rewards, I think that it would be extremely appealing. Um, and I honestly think, I don't think we'll get it for fall if it's coming. I think it'll come next year. Yeah. Almost as like a, you know, the games, maybe like in March, yeah. April, something like that. Like, the game's been out for a year. Here is a brand new mechanic to try to bring people back who have stopped playing. Yeah. Oh. Um, That's a really good point. So, what do you think we'd see in more, kind of, upcoming updates? So, there's been a lot of speculation about an update for Halloween. What are you expecting or hoping to see from that? Um, what's the guy's name? Is it Jack? That's yeah. the guy in... The previous games. I think it'll be him. I don't think it'll be anything groundbreaking. Not to be a negative Nelly or Bobby's gonna hear this and be like, oh my gosh, she's <laughs> <laughs> she's talking negatively again. I just like to set my expectations low and then if they come out with something amazing Yeah. You know, I'm like, oh yay, that's great. But if I think it's going to be something big and then they don't and then I'm really disappointed <laughs> but um yeah I think it'll be Jack I think they'll have some kind of Halloween costume thing or we're going to get candy or whatever it is I think it'll be fairly simple and then we'll have toy day uh, I think Bobby mentioned that everyone's talking about how Katrina is going to come back um I think it'll all be previous NPCs, which is kind of 
upsetting because I just really wish they would come out with something new that we haven't seen. Yeah. So then it, it makes it harder to predict, but I think that would be really cool if they came out with something new. And I think it, I, I do keep hoping for like new things, but from our end, this is our first kind of Animal Crossing game. Like I know that you seem to be really driven by the game and where did your love of Animal Crossing first start? Like what did you play first? Uh, yeah, so New Leaf was actually the only other Animal Crossing game I played. So on the 3DS. And I played that one a lot. Um, not near as much as this one, obviously. But I played that a lot. I played it a lot differently than I played this one. Um, I did a lot more. I focused on catching all the bugs, catching all the fish, building up my museum, stuff like that. Yeah. Now that I'm creating content, you know, that your focus kind of shifts out of that. You don't have as much time to do that stuff. Um, but honestly, like, this game really just, you know, won me over. I love this game so much. Oh, I think is. everything just kind of fell into place perfectly for Nintendo with this. I mean, I know the pandemic isn't a positive thing. But for the timeline of the release of this game, it was just the perfect game to come out Definitely. at that time. You know, it came out. Shortly after that, I got furloughed from my job. And so, you know, other than being a parent, I didn't really have anything else to do. So I just spent hundreds to thousands of hours on Animal Crossing. <laughs> So. I mean, I think that's the case for so many people and like there's been a lot of speculation that in a way maybe it's just that for all people are talking about the update so much, it's because they've got more time so they're putting more hours in so they're ready for an update sooner than they might have been otherwise. Right. Yeah, like they've run out of things to do and so they're just eager for the next thing. Yeah. So I think that's the one good thing about, I mean, I'd say the one good thing. I think that is a very positive thing about creating content is that um, I don't think that things are getting as stale or boring for me as they are for some people who are just playing the game because I'm constantly trying to think, okay, what can I build next? What can I do next? Yeah. Uh, looking for more ideas, whereas if I was just casually playing, I might be like, okay, I finished my island, now what? So we were talking about New Leaf being your first game. Is there any, like, NPCs that you'd like to bring over to New Horizons that we've not seen yet? Um, I really liked Reese and Cyrus. Have you heard of them before? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, they've they owned... briefly turned up for the wedding season. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Reese and Cyrus, duh. <laughs> duh. Yeah, they owned a, uh, like, retail shop and... Yes. Cyrus, so at the time we didn't have crafting or anything like that, and so Cyrus was the one who would kind of customize your furniture you would bring in, and um, talking with Bobby, he had a good idea to like bring Cyrus back and have him, you know, maybe he would have special customizations that he could do for different yeah. furniture. I think that would be really cool. The other one, I really liked, um, I don't remember the character's name. But she worked at Shampoodle. I don't know if that was her name or if that was the shop's name. I have the worst memory. I'm sorry. Um, I really liked her. There's absolutely no use for her now. I don't know how they would ever bring her back now that we can just customize our hair whenever we want to. But it used to. You had to go in there and I'm pretty sure you could only do it like once a day or once a week. It, was, it wasn't very often you could customize your hair if I'm remembering that right um so I don't know how they would bring her back I don't think they could no other than that I think pretty much every oh actually Tortimer was really cool yeah see and I, I think missed that whole aspect of the game what did they do exactly because we've seen on the amiibo cards that there's kind of like a little family of those Tortimer type things like what exactly was their role in the previous <laughs> games so on New Leaf, what you would do is you would 
you could go to Tortimer's Island and you would basically go over there and there were all these different mini games that you could play. Oh, wow. And you could even play them online with friends. And so it was basically like a mini game island. And there was some kind of currency that you would get over there and I'm blanking on what it was, but you would, you know, if you won the mini game, you would get a certain number of coins or whatever it was tickets i don't remember but um you could exchange them for different items that were over there on the island so he would have like the mermaid furniture was over there that's how you would get the mermaid furniture there was other like beach themed stuff you could get but also like going over there you could um go and catch different bugs and sharks and stuff and so you would just spend hours over there catching the rare bugs and fish. See, that sounds um, amazing. Fish. And I think yeah, you could it was really... Great. I feel like they could work that into New Horizons quite seamlessly. Yes. I don't know why they didn't have that. It just it makes no sense to me why they wouldn't have another island that you could fly to. Tornard mm. Island. I guess it could and... be an update potential. Possibly. I mean, even Hopefully. like simple mini games. For example, there was that um, maze in I think May Day for that May Day event. I'd love it if they just did like some simple mini games. Maybe they updated it once every few months, but almost in the same vein as Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker, where you've just got your little character and you just have to navigate yourself around this little maze or this little like map just to get to the end goal or just something, because. What we're really lacking at the moment is proper interactivity with items, such as even something like as simple as if you just went over to table tennis or your kind of um, table football table and just press A and you could go into a game of that, especially if you're on two player. I feel like that's kind of lacking, so it'd be nice to see some more official in depth mini games. Right. It's almost weird to me how much they. They push this multiplayer idea because, you know, Animal Crossing is big on multiplayer. It's big on you have to trade to get all the items. You have to do all this stuff if you want everything in the game. But then they don't let you do anything. They just, I mean, all you can do is trade, catch fish, catch bugs. And they even make that difficult. (laughs) Um, yeah. the fact that you can't place items on your own island when someone is over yeah, or even is so things. mind-boggling to me. Yeah, it was to I, us too. Like, I remember our first cataloging session, we had someone come over to our island, like, you know, just tell us what you want and we'll pick it up so you can catalog it. And obviously we did, then didn't have understand that you wouldn't be able to pick it up when somebody was there. I was like, right. oh. So now they've got so to make two have to trips. Fly back and yeah, it's really inconvenient. Yes, I just don't understand why. I mean, I can you know people have talked about. I wish we could terraform on other islands, and that would be amazing. I wish we could do that too. I can see why that would be more challenging. I mean, they can't even figure out the connection. I mean, we had trouble getting me over here. Yeah. Um, so, um, I can see why that would be difficult, but to just place an item, I don't understand why that's challenging. No. Mm. Yeah, it does seem like there's some scope to improve things but just going back to the whole design core element for a second um now last theme was kid car arcade now i'm curious to ask if when coming up with the idea for design core or this whole a different concept every episode type thing if there's any particular themes that you personally are hoping and praying is going to be kind of selected for the next theme that you've got a really cool idea for Uh, we actually have selected our theme. I can't announce it yet, and I'm really excited about it. Um, in the future beyond that, um, 
You know, we came up with so many different ideas. Um, you know, we had to come up with different room types, and we came up with the different themes themselves. And then we just have a random generator for each thing. Um, but some of them that I think would be really cool is just, like, we decided a certain theme could just be a specific color. So, like a green kitchen or blue kitchen or whatever it is. I think that would be really cool to try yeah. um, just because I've never done like a one tone room. And I think it could look really cool. Um, obviously like anything cottage core, I think would be fun to do because that's what I'm best at, I think. And I would love to see Holly and Charlotte's take on cottage core. Yeah. Um, do you think there's a, yeah, do you think there's a combination of, like, you know, themes and rooms that could come up that would be really difficult for you? Um, I think anything base-themed or modern would be more challenging for me. Um, I'm very into, like, very cluttered, uh, busy room so if there was ever like a simple living room you know something more streamlined and basic or even the modern theme would be hard just because I like to just throw stuff everywhere uh, but I like I like the ones that are challenging like the we did so the first one we did was the beach no, it was, it was actually just bringing the outside inside was the actual theme. Me and Holly just so happened that we both did a beach basement. No, it's, it is really cool because again, it's definitely been a niche area that has been relatively unexplored from now on because we really do love how it has made the interior design aspect a kind of more relevant and just fun like it was so cool to kind of give our take on it in a video and then just to see how the community responds and honestly i think every time a, a you know an episode comes out if there's that much hype around it it's just it's like never-ending content like literally the gift that keeps on giving because from one concept a load of different takes on that can stay See, I'd say it was exactly what people needed. Like JB said, the response that we had just, like, when I'd first done my kind of take on the design, we then had, like, within the space of 24 hours, like, three or four people that, you know, follow us quite closely that then tried the challenge. And I do feel like people needed to be taken back inside the houses again. Right. Yeah, it was really cool to see how many people entered. Um in Holly's Discord, and just how different everyone's rooms looked. Um, I love seeing everyone's take on it, and I really hope that more and more people will start doing it, and I hope that we can get more um, YouTube creators to be involved, and then their communities can get involved in it. I, it's kind of strange to me that interior design has taken such a back seat because in New Leaf that was all you could do. Yeah. Um, so I understand everyone's excitement about decorating outside, but also I feel like when I first started playing New Horizons, I really focused on the inside of my house and then I realized no one else was doing that. <laughs> so I just stopped. I, I like decorating the insides though. I think it's just because terraforming was new to this game, isn't it? And so right, yes. that was kind of a bit of a hype for people, just being able to do that. Right. But no, I see what you mean. Like, we have both have taken quite well. My, I've had to change mine for the island design, but we take a lot of pride in the inside of our house. Like, JB's is a replica of the flat that we were living in. Living in. Mine was very much kind of like a standard cottage. There was very much kind of clear-cut themes with rooms. So yeah, it was kind of straight. Like I'd say that I don't think I'm creative enough to do very much with terraforming. And so I do think that the house is kind of a small enough area for me to kind of show off a bit with design. Right. I feel like it's definitely a good 
starting place for people. You know, if if you are feeling overwhelmed by decorating an entire island, I definitely recommend starting inside. Just decide, okay, I'm going to decorate this room. I'm going to make a living room and then start there and just kind of figure out what things look good together and then start working your way outside because I see a lot of people commenting on my YouTube videos on Instagram that they just don't know what to do outside. If you're feeling stuck or overwhelmed, I definitely feel like going inside can kind of help spark some creativity or just ease your mind and you know, be less stressful than trying to decorate a full island. Something that you said earlier that I kind of picked up on was you said that you look like were more excited about introductions of brand new non-player characters, so not people from any of the old games. Is there, do you think there's any concepts that you think would fit into the island quite well? So say any buildings that you'd like to see added onto the island? Oh, new ones. Obviously, I want Brewster, but he is an old one. Um, not to talk about Bobby again and give him credit, but it, we talked about different ideas for NPCs in a Breaking Bells episode, and he had a really good one. Oh my gosh, he's gonna freak out if I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember if it was a grizzly bear or a polar bear. I think it was a grizzly bear that he wanted that would basically like have a shop or even be an extension of nooks and he would be there to sell um, the different materials that you needed rather than having to farm for materials all the time and maybe he would have special DIYs that you could get or whatever, but just some different way to gain materials because it gets so tedious. Yeah. I can understand at the beginning of the game, maybe you don't unlock him until you get a three star rating or a five star rating or whatever it is, but it's so tedious to collect materials once your island is basically built and you're just trying to add more items so I think that would be cool I think that would be a really good idea and I guess another one and I don't see how if they do this they couldn't not add a new character is you talked about the farming element and because the closest thing we have to that at the minute is turnips that we can buy off Daisy May and then trade um and they've never really done like cooking or farming before I think that that would very much need the introduction of a new character Perhaps something like Daisy May or, you know, even like Leaf where someone just turns up on the island as the visitor and they sell little bags of seeds or something. Right. Yeah, that would be really cute. Yeah, I would really, really like to see an NPC focus more on the fossils because if you think about the museum split into sections for, um, for art, you've got red. For bugs, you've got Flick, and for fish, you've got CJ, but there's not really an NPC tied to fossils. I guess you take them to Blathers for assessment, but I'd really love to see, like, an archaeologist, maybe styled a bit like Indiana Jones, you know, that kind of explorer hat that you could go to with fossils, because once you've completed them all, they're just annoyances that spawn on your island, but I'd love it if you create a full T-Rex fossil, you could take them to this NPC, and they could create a skinned model of the T-Rex. Oh. That would be cool. I'd love that. That would be really cool. Well, yeah, you're right. Because after you've collected all the fossils, there's really... I don't even bother digging them up anymore. Because <laughs> I have no point. Um, or even... I can't remember who said this. Maybe Charlotte. But even if you had the option to sell them to Blathers or give them to Blathers or something to do with the fossils after you've completed the museum. They really need to have some other thing to do with them. Yeah, I mean, another kind of option would be 
At the minute there's one DIY that incorporates a fossil to have more of them. Oh yeah, that would be cool. At the minute you yeah. can get a fossil door plate, but that's it. You could have like fossil furniture potentially. That would be amazing. Like That would be really cool. Like oh. a T-Rex. Oh, could you imagine uh, the island tours that would come from there? You could get like a prehistoric place, maybe model of bedrock from Flintstones. Like that would be amazing. That would be really cool. Cool. I don't understand how they don't. You think they have these kind of ideas and they just don't implement them, or what? I don't know. It's <laughs> I feel like the community has so many good ideas, and yeah. I don't know. You'd think that they can't have... you You think that they just need a meeting, kind of like we're doing now, where everyone just sits down at a table and like, look, let's talk and see what comes out, because the amount of concepts that just in this conversation that's come out that would work and that'd be really fun is incredible. So you'd just think that it wouldn't take them that long to get these type, like, type of ideas. Right. I just wish they would have a conversation about quality of life updates. That's what I want more than anything. More than a new NPC, more than returning NPCs, I just want quality of life stuff. Because so, that's the most frustrating. So in terms of quality of life, what is it you're meaning? So, for example, you know, I would love to have the option to buy more than five things yes. when I go to nooks i would like to be able to choose okay i want 25 customization kits i feel like that's a reasonable amount to yeah. want to buy at one time you know whatever it is definitely more than five at a time and the same for crafting um, right same for crafting especially clams to craft fish bait yeah i should be able to bulk craft them um i would like to be able to access my storage either honestly I would settle for um just accessing it in the house without opening up the storage each time yeah that's frustrating to me and then also when I am in resident services and I'm trying to uh, build a bridge or destroy a bridge, whatever it is, why can I not access my bank account? Why is there not like an app on my phone with my bells in it? Yeah. I have to go to the, <laughs> the little ATM thing each time. I get so frustrated when I sit down and he tells me I don't have enough money to destroy a bridge just because I forgot to go to the ATM. Just stuff like that. Yeah. I think that's the most frustrating. No, that... The dodos, talking to them. Yeah. And um, I think I was saying, like, a conversation just before we started recording. Isabel's another one of my kind of pet peeves. Just logging right. on every day and having to just, like, you're just pressing A without reading the screen. Because it's just like, okay, she's watched another TV show. Right. Or talked to her family, yeah. or... When did this actually happen? She doesn't leave resident services. How is she supposed to have watched this TV I... show? Right. I guess she's not working in there. She's just watching TV. Yeah. I, I kind of wish we could all do that when we go to work. Right. Like, uh, watch TV. Tell everyone about it in the morning. Right. But yeah, I can understand with the dodos, um, you know, maybe the fear is that someone logs on who doesn't know what they're doing, but I wish it was just a selection list. Yeah. Like it just popped up, like, do you want to travel local or online? You just chose that, and then you chose the next thing, because having to listen to that dialogue each time, and then if you click on the wrong thing, yes, I was just gonna say like to a back over. option. Oh, it's exhausting. Just being able to press back if you press the wrong thing with the dodos would be so helpful. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's such a pain. But kind of going more into this conversation a bit, 
Um, one thing that I'm really curious on is, of course, we've been familiar with your channel for a while, and we've like enjoyed so many of the amazing videos, like the speed builds. Like um, before we kind of set up the um, podcast properly, um, you linked us um, one of your most popular videos, and just the amount of time that those builds must have taken. Now, in terms of the question that I have for you, it's more about an overview, like. What inspired you to start YouTube and what was kind of your favorite moments doing YouTube that you kind of want to share? Yeah, um, so honestly for a long time, you know, I've watched YouTube for years, probably like 10 years, and I've always been like, you know, that would be really cool to have a YouTube channel, but I just never had anything that, uh, inspired me to really start one you know at one time I was like maybe I could do a vlog channel or I could do this or I could do that um and then Animal Crossing came out and I saw people making content about it and I was like oh that's really cool I wish I could do that and then when I got furloughed from my job I started with just Instagram just to kind of gauge you know, would anyone even be interested in seeing what I have to design? And people seemed to like the things that I was creating. And so I was like, okay, well, maybe I can do this. So I um, talked to my husband about it and we ordered a capture card. And at that point I was like, okay, well, I'm invested in this. I need to go all in because capture cards are not cheap. It was fairly expensive, more expensive than I anticipated it being. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm going to just, I think my first video was my favorite custom paths. And I kind of did a tour of my first island and just going over which custom patterns I liked the most. And that got a decent number of views, and then I kind of saw people doing island tours, and I was like, oh, I'd like to do that. I want to visit other islands and see what everyone is creating. This is really cool. So I posted my first video on June 25th, and then I think it was just a couple days later, um, I had found... Bobby, the Nintendo guru, through Nook Talk. Um, I was watching their podcast, and I was like, oh, I really like this guy. He seems cool. And so I was watching him stream. I think I had watched him like two or three times at that point. And I was watching him stream, and I was creating... Uh, I was doing a speed build at the same time, I think, and editing a video and... So I just kind of commented in his chat. I think I said something like, I'm trying to figure out if I should get back to editing or watch Bobby's stream. And he ended up looking at my channel while he was streaming. And uh, at the time, I think I had about 80 subscribers. And he ended up shouting it out in his stream. And he was like, you guys have to go follow her. And so they all did. And in that stream, I ended up going over 100 uh, subscribers, which was really cool, and that was my first kind of big milestone, and then everything just kind of blew up after that. <laughs> I, I think it was about a week or two later, I had a thousand subscribers, and then all of a sudden I had five thousand subscribers, and it just continued growing, um, so, like, Bobby shouting out my channel was one of the coolest moments for sure. Being on Breaking Bells has been awesome. Um, definitely a lot of cool stuff. I, I don't remember a particular YouTuber or person on Instagram that inspired me to start. I just decided I was going to do it, and then it just, here we are. <laughs> Oh, that is such a good story, especially about, like, the community, and with the Nintendo Guru, who, of course, is just such a nice person, like, of course, we've had them on the show, and it was, oh, it was just such a great conversation, but 
What were the kind of struggles that you encountered with the channel? Um, well, uh, you know, coming up with ideas and trying to keep fresh content is always hard. You know, you see a lot of other people posting different stuff and you're just like, oh, I wish I would have come up with that idea or, um, you know, just trying to keep things fresh and... Another hard thing for me is because most of my content is speed builds, they are very time consuming and I've been trying to keep up with like an every other day posting schedule. Yeah. And so I try to pre-record island tours and stuff like that just so I can have videos to post between my speed builds because they're the ones that take so long. Um... So at the beginning, that was very difficult because we didn't have the dream suite at the time and lining up island tours is hard enough. But when you only have, you know, if you have 100 subscribers, 200 subscribers, I have no shame in reaching out to people. I'll ask whoever, like, hey, can I come tour your island? They can ignore me. They can say no. It doesn't bother me. Uh, but it was difficult to find people <laughs> to agree for me to come. Um, I was fortunate that I did find, you know, the ones that did say yes are amazing people, amazing creators. Um, so I'm very fortunate for the ones that gave me a chance. Yeah. But that was very hard at first to find people to agree for me to come. And now that we have the dream suite, it's much easier because yeah. I can just say, hey, I still like to ask people. I know that some YouTubers will just visit without asking and post it. I That kind of makes me uncomfortable because I don't want to make a creator uncomfortable by, yeah. you know, showing their island to all of YouTube when maybe they didn't want that. So I always ask first, I like to get all their information, and I like to ask them questions before I go, kind of figure out, hey, what's the theme of your island? Um, so the Dream Suite has definitely made that a lot easier. Yeah. It's also difficult with speed builds, gathering the items that you need for a certain build. I found that with the uh, Kid Core Arcade, when I didn't have any arcade items, and I had to frantically message all my friends like hey can you can you help me out here because I don't have any of these and I feel like cataloging parties have become less and less relevant now that the game's been out for a longer period of time yeah it's when kind I of first started playing they were happening all the time it's kind of like it's accepted that most people already have everything and right. as you probably saw from my attempt at KidCore, like, it's not the case. I've had so many people, like, sending me arcade items in the mail after seeing my attempt at that just because I had <laughs> literally nothing to go on. And, like, you talked about your speed builds, build. so as JB said, today we watched your speed build of the entrance of your island. How long did that take to film? Because that was really quite detailed. Um, I would say, so I never really film one all at once, or I guess it's rare that I film one all at once. I would say that one probably took mm, four to five hours Wow. of building. Um, I'm normally fairly quick with terraforming unless I completely change my mind on what I'm doing. Um... It also helps that I only have, like, a general idea in my head, and then I just kind of go with the flow, like, whatever it ends up being, it ends up being. Like, when I built that entrance, the only thing I knew is that I wanted to have stairs to the left and a bridge to the right, um, the left side being elevated one level and the right side being the shopping district, and that's all I kind of knew. And so I just let it become whatever it was going to become. 
I think that helps not to have like this set thing in my head because then I feel like I would overthink it as my husband likes to call it uh like because there are times that I'll do that that I'm like oh my gosh it's not turning out how I wanted it um and he calls it paralysis by analysis because I'll just sit there and overthink and then um end up not wanting to post something uh but yeah probably four to five hours and then editing normally takes me an hour to two hours depending on how many cuts and voiceovers I have to do mm, yeah well it is very very easy to second guess yourself with these type of things like the amount of times that I have personally put together a thumbnail and just spent the longest time aligning yeah. something so it's completely symmetrical and then just scrapping the idea and doing something else it's kind of draining but do you have any kind of things that you would do differently from starting your channel or kind of things that you regret things that i regret um i don't think i regret anything I feel like it's kind of all happened so fast that I haven't even had time to process it. Um, like I still can't believe that I have 9,000 subscribers. It's just overwhelming to think about because at the beginning I was just like, wouldn't it be amazing if, you know, 50 people wanted to watch my videos. That would be so cool. Mm. And do you have um, like a goal in mind? like? an end goal for what you want to achieve on YouTube, not necessarily subscribe account, but in terms, like, a particular milestone or a video you're hoping to make? Um, well, obviously 10,000 subscribers is, like, ultimate goal right now. Um, I'm trying to think of a particular video. I don't know of a particular video that I want to make, but... I mean, I do want to make it into, like, having it as a full-time career would be awesome. I don't know if that's ever attainable or not. Um, I, you know, when you, when I started the channel, I thought a long time about what I wanted to call it because if I ever did want to do this full-time, I knew that... You know, Animal Crossing's not going to be around forever. You know, New Horizons anyway. And so I didn't want to necessarily pigeonhole myself into one specific game. And so I am hoping that at some point I'll be able to play other games or review other games. I started streaming on Twitch, and I do, um, obviously Animal Crossing over there, I do, we've played Fall Guys, I would like to play Mario over there, uh, so I'm having a lot of fun with that too. I think YouTube and streaming kind of go hand in hand, they benefit you to do both, um, so yeah, I mean, ultimate goal would be to do this full time, but right now, um, it's still just kind of a hobby, but I'm enjoying it. Do you remember like one of the first goals you set yourself with the channel? Like, I know for example with JB and I, like JB said to me, okay, so we're doing island tours and for me it'll be like a made it moment when someone reaches out to us and asks us to tour their island. And to be honest, that happened a lot sooner than we thought it was going to. I remember him running into the room like, oh my god, we've made it! Which was like yes. quite a big thing. Like, do you do you right. remember setting yourself like your first goal like that for the channel? Oh yeah, I had several. So like, getting to 100 subscribers was a big goal for me. Um, you know, that's the point where you can change your URL. So it can, at first it's just like a bunch of letters and numbers and whatever, so getting to 100 subscribers, um, I also, yes, getting someone to ask me to tour their island, um, 
And then, so once I hit 100 subscribers, my next goal was to get to 1,000 because that's when you can start monetizing and that's when you can kind of start, you know, turning it into a job. Um, getting to 100 was probably one of the most exciting um, achievements. So, like, I remember Bobby shouting out my channel on his Twitch and I was just like called my husband in here and I was like oh my gosh he's talking about my channel right now I'm freaking out and then like as he was streaming my numbers were just going up and up and up and then I hit 100 and we were freaking out um yeah no that is amazing and it's really cool to see the evolution of the YouTube channel it is it is quite inspiring, especially for anyone listening to this that has aspirations of the, you know, for themselves or starting a channel or anything like that. It is really fantastic. Now, it's kind of coming up to that time when we're about to wrap things up. Do you have anything else to kind of say? Like, where can we find you on the internet? Yeah, so you can find me um, on YouTube and Twitch at ConsoleKato, and then I also am on Instagram and Twitter at ConsoleKato. Um, it's spelled C-O-N-S-L, wait, C-O-N-S-O-L-E-C-A-I-T-O. -E That's my username on everything. Yeah, and we really cannot recommend enough that people do go and follow the Twitch and subscribe to the channel because it is just so much fun to watch the amount of things that you can create and even like the islands that you're touring because we see, we feel that it's very... Very therapeutic to watch your videos and just see how things are made. It's it is a really great experience, so we cannot recommend that enough. Thank you so much, and thank you guys so much for having me on. This was so much fun. Oh no, we absolutely loved it, and it's just fantastic because we feel really, really blessed that you've come on the show and that we've been able to just have such, you know, such a chill conversation about the community and the game and everything in general. So thank you so much for being on. Of course. Um, so yeah, this has been another episode of the Five Star Talk podcast. We really do hope that you enjoy. Please subscribe to the channel so that you can see this. We tend to release them every Sunday. So yeah, please like, comment, and subscribe. JBN Millie and Console Cato.